In today's video, we are going to be talking about this Skaven Spearhead that is basically the old Vanguard box that got re-released. We're going to be talking about points, upgrades, tactics for and against this particular list, and so on. If you enjoy the content, consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing, as well as checking the links down in the description below if you want to find any kind of PDFs or want to join us on Discord or support me on Call for your Patreon. Let's get into the video. So first up, you're going to find the relevant PDF if you want the rules for this particular spearhead down in the pinned comment below. As always, we're going to start with the summary and you're going to get 25 miniatures in this particular spearhead. As I mentioned before, this is the old Vanguard box and the only thing that really changed is that GW threw out the old clan reds and included a new one that you can also find in all of the different starter sets, in Skaventide and so on. And the only thing that is maybe interesting for you if you have Skaventide and so on is that this is an older Grey Seer model that by no means looks bad or anything. But it had to be the older one simply because obviously the new one shares a sprue with another character model and thus couldn't be updated. Overall, I think the new box looks great. I really like the new Skaven boxes with the green coloring and the paint scheme as well. As far as the general setup of this list goes, I think it's way more traditional than the other Skaven Spirit that I've also made a review for. You can find it in the playlist. This one is also going to be linked down in the pinned comment because this one is only going to be running one character. Meanwhile, the Skaven Tide Spirit list is running a whopping three characters. And I think this is going to be the easier list to play overall. You have 20 clan reds, which are going to be great at holding objectives. You have your heavy hitters with the storm fiends and you have your coin flip weapon with the warp lightning cannon. Overall, I think this is a very enjoyable list to play, if definitely not of the strongest ones. We're going to talk about the specifics in a little bit, but generally a very fun list, but definitely I would say a little bit below average as far as list strength goes in spirit. It's not a horrible list or anything, but it definitely has its very pronounced weaknesses. So how about we take a look at the list? Now, this list is going to get updated very, very shortly. So the release of the Battle Tome is imminent, and that means that we are going to get some changes. Some of the updates have already hit uh, the internet on Warver community. We've already got documents for that. So this particular list, I said is 720 points, but it is only accurate for like another week. Uh, the points are going to probably go down by approximately 30. I think clan rates are going to go down by 10. I think the Warp Lightning Cannon is going down to 160 or 150 and the Storm Fiends may also get a little bit cheaper. You're going to find the information on the screen with the updated points cost for the new Battle Tome, but you're still way north of 500 or 600 points, which I consider to be decent and acceptable for these kinds of lists. Also, later on, updating this list to 1000 points should be very, very easy considering that you can keep it all within one singular regiment. As you can see, the Grey Seer is your regimental leader, then you have your Clan Red, Storm Fiends, and the Warp Lightning Cannon, and obviously your Grey Seer is going to be your general. That enables your regiment to then take another unit, and if you pick something like a Halpit Abomination or something, you're going to be very, very close to 1000 points, and you don't need to make any kind of super complex purchases or, or think too hard about list building. All you need is, in theory, just one additional box of models you find cool, and you're going to be close to 1000 points in a single regiment, which I think is cool because you're going to be running a one drop and starting the game more often than not, and you're still going to be running a serviceable list, which is fun. Now, as far as the savings go, I think this list is way more traditional to what we expect from GW these days. We're sitting at approximately with 31%, which I consider to be bang on average. Nothing special, but also not horrible, uh, considering that you're getting only one character and that you're getting Storm Fiends and Warp Lightning Cannon discounted is pretty dang good. Clan Reds, you can definitely get cheaper, especially now that we are still around the period of the Skaventide release. You can still buy Skaventide. A lot of basically people are just kind of breaking open the box and selling Clan Reds separately in 10 man squads for very, very cheap. So, yeah, the Clan Reds are basically keeping this one a little bit less optimal than it could be. But still, if you look at the Storm Fiends and the Warp Lightning Cannon, if you put those together, that's almost the price you pay for the spirit itself and you're basically getting the Gracie and the clan rats for free and it's still okay so would i consider buying this one multiple times eh probably not uh, but if you see yourself running multiple units of storm fiends and multiple warp lightning cannons or catapults maybe at that point you could consider it but definitely not for the clan rats and multiple graciers it's simply do you want to have multiple storm fiends and multiple warp lightning cannons if the answer is yes 
At that point, I would definitely consider getting this one multiple times. If not, I would buy stuff separately after buying this one once. And now that we are already talking about upgrades, let's continue with that. Now, talking about buying this box twice, I would generally not recommend it unless you, as I said, really want those two units, simply because we are in a period that is just perfect for Skaven to upgrade their army for very, very cheap. So you can get a Skaven tight half, you can get an ultimate starter set half, split the boxes with someone, and get models for very, very cheap. Skaven tight, especially, at least here in Germany, is getting discounted very heavily. You can get it for in some places for 145 or 140 euros. If you split that box at 70 euros for a ton of Skaven models. And yeah, I think it's going to be the same way over in the US and so on. So if you can find those halves over on eBay or split these boxes with someone, you have struck gold. And that is why I would generally not be against buying the Spearhead twice, but you have way better options elsewhere with a higher model variety. And you're just going to be padding out your options that way instead of uh, multiplying up on what you're already getting in this Spearhead. Just getting a little bit more variety. I think especially if you're starting this army from scratch, is going to be way more interesting. So definitely keep an eye on the starter sets, uh, especially Skaven Tide and so on. And if all of that is not an option, as I said, there are going to be a ton of releases with this particular Spearhead. So you can buy Vizic if you want to, which is one of the coolest models in Age of Sigmar. You can buy a Brood Terror, which while it's not being received as good at the time of recording, it is still a really cool model with a ton of points for very cheap. Uh, at least, you know, points to dollar ratio. And then you can get Red Ogres and Warblock Gisales, which are very strong competitively, and that you can run alongside the Spearhead and get your list to 1,000 points. And as I said, if you want to get this particular list to 1,000 points and keep it all within one regiment, I would strongly suggest you pick up a Helper Abomination, and then you're going to be close to 1,000 points. I think with the updates, you're going to be sitting at close to 950 or 960 points. So yeah, lots of options for you to choose from as a Skaven player at the time of recording. If you're watching this video three years down the line, your options will definitely be diminished, but the starter set will probably still be around for another few months, and you can still get things for relatively cheap, especially clan rats, which are going to be very popular. And yeah, sitting on multiple clan rats, like 40, 60, 80 even, is not a bad thing at all. You just have to have the motivation to paint them. And that's, in my opinion, the way bigger problem when buying multiples of these boxes simply because painting clan rats is definitely a piece of work. Having multiples of them, like a lot of them, is great. But yeah, having the motivation to paint them is a completely different beast. Next up, we are going to be talking about the rules for the Warp Spot Claw Pack. You're going to be running the units that you can see here on the left hand side. So your general is going to be your Grey Seer. You're getting three Storm Fiends with different weapon loadouts that we're going to talk about in a second, one Warp Lightning Cannon, and two units of Tank Clan Reds, which is ideal. So overall, this list, quite interesting, very simple to run, very simple to understand. You just look at the models and immediately know what their battlefield role is. And I think especially newer players are going to appreciate it, while veterans who are just kind of getting into Skaven jumping over from another army maybe, are going to have an easy time immediately kind of understanding what this spirit wants to accomplish. Very cool list, and I really appreciate this one. Next up, we are going to be talking about the battle trade. You have always three claw steps ahead. Once per phase, in the enemy movement phase, you can pick one friendly unit that is not in combat, and that unit can make a normal move ability as if it were your movement phase. This is an ability that is extremely underrated, and is extremely strong, especially if your clan rats are not tied in combat. This can be very annoying. Your unit, if you start the game, can basically body block your opponent from getting on an objective where they first need to chew through your clan rats to even get on the objective. You can body block with your massive storm fiend bases if you wanted to, and so on. You have a ton of options, or you can, you know, just keep your grace here safe and, you know, make charges for your opponent way, way longer than they usually would have been. So three claw steps ahead is pretty dang good and definitely underrated. If you're a newer player and you see all those fancy battle traits that give your opponent uh, an additional rend or super complex abilities that do a ton of stuff, this one is definitely one of the better ones, in my opinion. Next up, we have our regiment abilities. You can only pick one of these, so you have to make a choice here. We have Warpstone Laced Armor. So for your Stormfiends, you can give them 
a ward save of four up once per game. You use it once per battle as a reaction whenever your storm fiends get attacked. It's not a bad ability by any means, especially your storm fiends are very, very important and a massive kind of target that draws a lot of attention to it. So that is why this ability is definitely not bad, even though it is just once per game. And then your other ability is Endless Swarm of Rats, where this is a passive, so it is active at all times. It reads, when a friendly clan rats unit uses its Seething Swarm ability, you can return D6 slain models to that unit instead of D3. And the ability Seething Swarm activates at the end of your turn and at the end of your opponent's turn. So if your opponent does not manage to kill your clan rats for whatever reason in one go, they are going to keep coming back over and over and over again. And keeping in mind that your clan rats also have the reinforcements rule, which means that even if they are completely deleted as a 10-man squad, you can bring them back once per game. So you can bring back 20 clan rats or both of those units that you have once per game, and it is going to keep endless swarm of rats pretty relevant. Now, when should you pick either of these? I think the clan rat ability uh, endless swarm of rats only makes sense against low damage armies or spearheads. That means that whenever you look at the spirit of your opponent and you see a lot of damage to or a lot of high rent that basically removes the armor that your clan rats have completely where it doesn't even allow you a save. At that point, I think that your clan rats are probably going to die in a single combat phase and it is going to make endless swarm of rats relatively useless. Whenever you have, for example, a tree lord crashing into your clan rats, they're probably all dead. And at that point, it doesn't make sense picking this one. If your opponent has a lot of damage one weapons with no rent at all, uh, for example, uh, Lumineth come to mind, I think this one makes a lot more sense. So definitely make sure to take your time, especially if it's your first game, take a look at your opponent's list, and then, uh, yeah, make an informed decision on whether you should pick Endless Swarm of Rats or not. And it makes the choice very easy. So if you judge that your opponent doesn't have too many units that have very high damage and red characteristics, you pick and the Swarm of Rats. If you feel like your opponent has very high damage and so on, um, you're going to be picking Warpstone Laced Armor. And that is not only going to keep your Storm Fiends alive for a little bit longer, it is also going to help you punch back against those tankier, more elite units. And last but not least, we are going to be talking about the enhancements. You can give one of them to your general, namely your Grey Seer. We have Skilled Manipulator, which is a passive, so it's active at all times. Your general has a ward of 4 up while they are within 1 inch of a friendly clan rats unit. This one is pretty decent, especially if you get shot at a lot. Your opponent can still declare your Grey Seer as a target whenever they are shooting. And if you just keep your general close to your clan rats, giving him a ward of 4 up is going to make a massive difference considering how squishy a Grey Seer is. Is this my first choice? Definitely not. You have a little bit of a better choice among the other three options but it is not a bad choice at all and especially for beginners it's probably a good way to introduce them to this box and to spearhead simply because this one is going to allow you to make some missteps with cover and as far as you know positioning goes especially for your general and your gray seer then we have skitter leap um, in your hero phase you can make a casting roll of 2d6 on a six up remove your general from the battlefield and set them up again on the battlefield more than six inches away from all enemies they cannot use the move ability in the following movement phase. I think this one is probably the ideal rule um, or the ideal enhancement to pick simply because it works very similar to what you do with the other Skaven Spearhead where you just position your general somewhere on the battlefield on an objective that your opponent has just stickied and left completely. Then you just pop up on that objective, um, usually in your opponent's deployment zone even, and be annoying with your grace here and your opponent actually has to move over if they don't have any shooting units and you get to keep battlefield control. Skitter Leap is not going to keep your grace here alive for much longer but it is definitely going to annoy your opponent to no end and it's going to make them or force them to make a decision whether they are going to want to hold the midfield or divert some of their attention to run back to their home objective and get rid of your grace here. I think this one is excellent. Then we have Cage of Warp Lightning. You pick one visible enemy unit within six of your general and roll a dice. On a two up, the enemy has to strike last rule this phase. And on a one, you inflict one mortal damage on your general. Uh, this one is just a once per battle in any combat phase ability. And I personally really don't like this one. I have no idea what it is with the GW design team and abilities that can go completely wrong. 
because they don't feel good at all. I understand that Skaven have these rules where they inflict damage on themselves. It is very reminiscent of how orcs work in Warhammer 40k, where they can blow up their own people and so on, and that's very funny. But as far as orcs go in 40k, it usually works no matter what. So you roll badly and you inflict a lot of mortal damage to yourself, but the ability still goes off, and this is not the case here. So I would have wished that even if you roll a one, the rule would have read, inflict one mortal damage on your general, and the unit still has strike last this phase. Because let's face it, this is just a once per battle ability, and if you roll a one, it is going to feel horrible. Because not only have you lost an enhancement slot and achieved nothing with it, you've also dealt one mortal damage to yourself. It is just a feel bad rule, and I don't recommend it, and I personally don't like the design at all. Then we have Scurry Away, which is any combat phase. Roll a dice on a 3-up. This unit can immediately use the Retreat ability as if it were your movement phase. If it does so, no mortal damage is inflicted on it. This is going to allow your Gracier to stay alive if you don't want to keep them in melee combat without getting any mortal damage whenever they do so. This one, also not bad if you don't see yourself using Skitter Leap and if you want to keep your uh, Gracier within striking distance so they can get their casts off but not as close as, you know, keeping them in melee combat, which is very scary for a grace here. So overall, I think my two favorite picks here are Skitter Leap and Skip Manipulator. Scurry Away is also pretty good. I can see its use, but Cage of Warp Lightning or Cage of Warp Lightning is just not my choice. I don't like it at all, and that's basically how I would use this one. Skitter Leap, probably the best one here. Next up, we are going to take a look at the units. First up, the Gracia we've talked about already in quite a lot. Why is this guy so squishy? Well, you have a 6-up save, 5 health, and no ward save to speak of. So probably a piece of paper is going to hit that guy and he's going to implode. So your general rule for him, if you don't do Skitter Leap, is to keep him close to your clan rats, use them as a meat shield for them, and then you're going to be able to use your Will of the Horned Red and your wither ability to at least inflict a little bit of damage here or there and be annoying to your opponent. As far as the Will of the Horned Red ability goes, I think it is good on clan rats, but it's even better on storm fiends simply because they lack the control score and your clan rats should usually be fine as far as numbers go on an objective unless they are severely depleted on models and they are just super destroyed. But then again, you know, you can heal the three of them over and over again, so it really depends. Um, as far as Wither goes, you're just going to be dealing some mortal damage if you're successful on your rolls, which is fine. But overall, the Grace here doesn't have that much of an impact, let's face it. Next up, we are going to be talking about the carry of this entire list, even though they are a little bit squishier than you would probably expect. The Storm Fiends. If you are playing against this particular list, these guys are the first ones that need to go next to the Grey Seer, simply because they implode so quickly. The Storm Fiends are the main damage source of this particular list, and they are the main target as far as units go that can severely deplete especially your bigger units, as you can see if you look through their weapons list. They have a save of 4 up, so if you hit them with rent 1 attacks, they are going to severely suffer, even though they have 6 health. So yeah, if you play against this list, the first target that needs to go is these guys. As far as their weapons go, we have one Rattling Cannons, one Wind Launcher, one Shock Gauntlets, and two units with or two models with clubbing blows. That means that you have 12 attacks in melee, all of them damage two, one of them, or four attacks in this case, with rent one. Pretty good. And the Rattling Cannons, also very, very scary. 3d6 attacks means on average you are getting 11 hits, and of those hits, obviously half hit, so five or six hits. With rent 1 and damage 1, it's not bad at all. And then you obviously have still your wind launchers, and if they get into melee, they have a ton of attacks there. So Storm Fiends, squishier than you would think, but still offensively very scary. And then the Shock Gauntlets also have a passive special rule, which reads, each time an attack made with the Shock Gauntlet scores a critical hit, that attack scores d6 hits instead of 1. Make a wound roll for each hit. That is especially scary, because out of 4 attacks, Rolling a 6 on a hit is not that difficult and not that unlikely. So yeah, overall, Storm Fiends offensively very scary, defensively not that scary. 
Next up, we have the Warp Lightning Cannon. And this is one of the massive mistakes that a lot of people make when playing against this particular list. They see a huge cannon and they focus on it. This Warp Lightning Cannon is not a horrible or anything. It's not a super bad model or anything. But if you look at the weapon that it has, it has 2d6 attacks and it hits on 4s. Every hit of those is going to turn into a mortal wound. As you can see with the Warp Lightning Blast rule on the bottom left, I guess, in the blue square. And that means that the averages work out as follows. The average of 2d6 attacks is 7, and then you're going to uh, hit half of them, which is going to be 3.5. So let's say you're getting 4 hits that go through. That means that you're dealing 4 mortal wounds to something. They cannot make any saves and nothing, and that is pretty devastating, but it's not super horrible. 4 mortal wounds is not that bad. The thing that a lot of people see is, you know, huge weapon, a very scary, and they focus on this one before getting rid of the Storm Fiends. And in my opinion, that is a massive mistake. Now, if you are playing Sylvaneth, for example, and you have the weapons and the damage profiles to take this one out in two hits with a Tree Lord, for example, which deals four damage, then you can definitely attack this one, get rid of it as quickly as possible and call it a day. But most Spearheads have damage two weapons at most, and getting rid of this one is going to eat up a lot of attacks that I would personally rather spend on taking out Storm Fiends because I need less damage to deal uh, to actually take out a model of a Storm Fiend and that is going to diminish their offensive capabilities way more than, you know, having to deal that additional two damage and then getting rid of a Warp Lightning Cannon, which in my opinion has less of an impact than a single Storm Fiend. Unless, obviously, your opponent rolls 12s on the attacks hits all of them and they are suddenly, I don't know, very, very lucky and they win the game because of it. But that never really happened in my five games. So your mileage may vary. If your opponent happens to be very lucky, your perception is probably going to change. But in my experience, I usually prefer targeting the Storm Fiends over the Warp Lightning Cannon, although I don't think that this is a horrible model or anything. And last but not least, we have our Clan Reds. Nothing to say here. We've already talked about them in numerous videos. Uh, the Clan Reds have the reinforcements rule, which means you can bring them back. Seething Swarm means that you can bring back D3 of them at the end of any turn. Keep that in mind. Not only yours, but also your opponents. And they are there to hold objectives. That's basically it. Pretty solid models. They are going to usually be way more important than you think, especially if you play Skaven for the first time. So definitely make sure to pick the right targets for them to charge and not just, you know, use them. I mean, they are expendable models, but make sure that they survive for as long as possible. And that is the entire army. Uh, the reason why this army I consider to be a little bit below average as far as power level goes is because you're really lacking punching power. The only real unit that is not completely random and it is going to be very consistent in dealing a lot of damage and being an annoyance to your opponent are the Storm Fiends. And the Storm Fiends are sadly not tanky enough to be considered a threat for four turns. They are going to die by turn two, if your opponent really throws everything at them that they have to offer. And at that point, you're going to severely struggle to win the game, because if you have not depleted their units severely by that point, there's really not much more you can do at that point, because all they need to do is send one unit to your Warp Lightning Cannon, and at that point it can't shoot anymore, because it doesn't have shooting combat, and your Clan Rats on their own are not going to be able to do anything, your Grey Seer dies very quickly. And the rules, in my opinion, uh, like for example the enhancements, the battle traits and so on, are good, but not strong enough to really elevate this particular spearhead on the next level. I think it's a serviceable, decent spearhead, and I would strongly recommend you get it if you like Skaven, and if you have Skaven tight anyway. But as far as power level goes, it is probably a 5 or a 4 out of 10, which, as I said, is not bad. It's average or slightly below average but it's definitely not one of the strongest boxes out there even though the warp lightning cannon and the storm fiends look relatively scary now if you have anything to add to this particular video or to anything i've said definitely drop it down in the comments below share your experiences if you've played with this box or against this box and let me know what you think about what i've said here other than that consider sharing this video with anyone who would be interested in joining the skaven with this particular box especially i have also made a video about the other skaven spearhead so check that one out as well and i hope this video was insightful and i hope to see you in the next one thanks so much for listening take care